Today, we're going to be revisiting and preparing brown rice grain spawn. We will be preparing this in an intermediate and a beginner level way. For the beginner level, we'll be kind of replicating the Uncle Ben tech, but we're transferring in a still air box to a clear mason jar. The reason some of you might want to do this is so you can observe the mycelial growth and have a grain jar without necessarily having a instant pot or pressure cooker. This allows a beginner mycologists, especially if they're not using a syringe for the Uncle Ben inoculation, uh, to be able to inoculate a jar of grain with agar. Now, granted, this method does have a higher contamination rate. However, if you are careful, use a lot of isopropyl alcohol and a still air box, you can achieve good results. Secondly, we'll be looking at how to prepare brown rice in the Instant Pot as well as experimenting with a third method to reduce our cleanup afterwards. This is still uh, in the works though, and we'll show you common pitfalls and how to avoid them. Now, why do I use brown rice as my grain spawn? Brown rice is cheap, easy to get, and it's not as dirty as other grains, such as rye. And to me, it's easier to hydrate perfectly. Uh, the popcorn tech or bird seed are more expensive, uh, and bird seed is uneven, which can lead to problems with hydrating all the grains properly. While brown rice isn't the fastest grain to colonize, it is second or third place and produces some of the most robust fruiting bodies. Let's go ahead and get into the still air box and start with the Uncle Ben tech. Now to start our Uncle Ben transfer, we're going to start by spraying everything down with isopropyl alcohol and flame sterilizing your tool. I've already done this outside of the still air box, so everything is clean on the inside. I've sprayed down this jar with ISO as well, so I am going to go ahead and wipe down the excess. Now you want to make sure that you try and do this in a still air box. However, being inside of here does not mean that we're not going to run into contamination. I like to spray down my still air box from the top down with isopropyl alcohol so the particles can grab any debris in the air and pull them down to the surface. You want to make sure to move gently in here as well to not create huge currents. Now with our Uncle Ben's rice, we are going to smash it up to kind of loosen the grains. You really just want to break all those kernels individually. You can use any brand of ready rice. Uh, generally, the off brands tend to work much better. Now we're going to go ahead and prep our jar. We are going to keep this lid on for now until we get this open. We want to keep the time open in air as low as possible. and usually fill these jars about three quarters of the way full. Now we can seal everything up. And you could let this rest for a few days just to make sure there's no growth, or you could go ahead and inoculate this right away. There is some rice left over in here. You can eat this, throw it out, or I'm going to go ahead and toss it in one of those experimental jars that are really low, uh, just so it doesn't go to waste. Beautiful. And for our intermediate tech, let's move to the stove and start boiling our rice for our grain jars. Now let's talk about some common pitfalls and how to avoid them. Overhydrated rice can lead to popped kernels when you pressure cook the entire thing. 
These pop kernels are incredibly prone to bacterial contamination and not what we want to inoculate. While undercooked rice just kind of leads to slower mycelial development, it's definitely more manageable. We want to aim for firm, slightly hydrated grains with none of them being popped in the jar. Now to prepare the brown rice, I will start by simply putting an in indiscriminatory amount of water in a pot and filling it with my desired amount of rice. I'm just going to use the rest of this bag and prepare as many jars as that will make. Put the stove on high, we can let this boil. We're only going to cook it for 10 minutes once it reaches boiling. We want to be sure not to overhydrate the rice. We're going to set our timer for 10 minutes, starting now. And once this is done cooking, we can move it to a strainer, rinse it under cold water to stop the cooking, and let it rest for 15 minutes to air dry. This will ensure that we have perfect hydration. We can now strain our rice, rinse this under cold water. This stops the cooking and rinses all of the starch off. Now we can let this sit here for the next 15 minutes to air dry. While we're waiting for the rice to dry, let's take a look at the experimental method I'm trying with loading everything into a jar. This first jar was a one part rice to one and a quarter part water which definitely filled the jar too much and as you can see all of these kernels have popped so no good our second attempt would be this guy which i did about a one to one ratio and i cooked the rice for an hour and 20 minutes uh, the first one i did an hour and 45 in the instant pot our third attempt, which is the most successful looking, was only a third cup of rice to probably about the uh, third cup, about halfway to three quarters of the way full. Uh, so not a one to one ratio, uh, but this one did cook the best. Still got that lump in the middle, but not very many popped kernels. So we're getting there. Uh, I will update. I'm going to try maybe inoculating this to just see how this works out. Now with our rice air dried, we'll go ahead and move it into our mason jars along with our modified lids. These are just simply hole punched with RTV silicone for a DIY self-healing injection port and some micropore tape double layered up over the other hole for fresh air exchange. I like to make sure that I knock down any of the rice from our little lip and fill them about half to three quarters full. Get our modified lid on. Crank the seal. This wasn't that much rice, so the second and third one I'm going to fill only about halfway. All three of these are ready to be covered in aluminum foil. Now these can be fresh cooked. Simply choose your favorite option. I'm going to do mine for an hour 45. If you're using the Instapot, I usually recommend doing about 1.5 times what you would normally do in a pressure cooker. Uh, this only achieves about 12 and a half to 13 PSI, where a standard pressure cooker reaches anywhere uh, between like 15, 16 PSI. Once this is done, we can let it cool overnight, and tomorrow we'll be ready to inoculate these grains. And with two of our properly hydrated grain jars, we're going to go ahead and inoculate them. I'll go ahead and inoculate one with this Lion's Mane Liquid Culture, 
and I'll go ahead and inoculate the other with this golden oyster uh, agar dish that has gone on for far too long. Let's go ahead and start with our lion's mane. We're going to go ahead and flame sterilize the needle tip, let this cool down briefly, and we can withdraw some of our lion's mane liquid culture. Give that a quick shake. Got about five cc's, which may be far too much, but we'll go ahead and inoculate it into this grain jar. I'm gonna go ahead and pasteurize this needle real quick, and we will move on to the golden oysters. Now we can move on to transferring our golden oyster. I'm actually going to use a different jar. This one has an injection port. I would much rather use this unmodified lid for the style of agar transfer. I'm going to prep our lid by taking the ring off and leaving the lid on. I'm just going to transfer this really big piece which has this growth on it. I'm going to flame sterilize the blade and this plate can be thrown out. I did that a little dirty. Um, I could have cut that up into smaller sections and such, but I'm not too confident in this grain jar. And likewise with the genetics of this oyster, I have some other plates that are going that I'm more confident in transferring them to better grain. Now this is just an example to show you how to do this kind of agar transfer. We can go ahead and flip this lid upside down for passive airflow. Quarter turn loose. End label. Now both of these are good to go into incubation and monitor their growth. While I was putting those to incubate, one of the Amanita uh, agar dishes has gotten contaminated, I think. I'm gonna go ahead and toss this guy just because I'm not too happy with the looks. And that wraps it up. We covered our two beginner and intermediate level brown rice grain spawn methods, as well as a experimental tech that I'm trying to perfect to reduce the cleanup and the amount of overall effort that I have to put into a grain jar. My aim is to just be able to put the rice and the water directly into a mason jar and pressure cook that to sterilization as well as perfect hydration. I hope these methods have made you more confident in your grain spawn. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.